Hello and welcome to Anesthesia Tools. Today, I shall take you through how anesthesia ventilators work. This is to build a platform for future discussions on advanced modes of ventilation. Do you think that anesthesia ventilators simply replace manual squeezing of reservoir back to automated mechanism? The manner in which positive pressure ventilation is employed in anesthesia has also undergone major changes. Ventilators that obtain the patient's minute ventilation from an anesthetic machine delivered it to the patient and then vented it into the atmosphere, the minute volume dividers have been superseded mainly by devices that utilize circle systems and low flows. Now, some general principles on how to set a ventilator. The three variables involved in the ventilatory parameters on a ventilator are traditionally arranged in the simple equation below that is minute volume equals tidal volume into rate that is breath per minute. Armed with this equation, a user should be able to switch on and set up any ventilator in its basic mode for control ventilation. The equation can have only two user defined variables, the third being dependent on the other two. Moving ahead, the tidal volume is derived from the inspiratory flow delivered by the ventilator and the time over which this is delivered. It may be expressed in the equation tidal volume equals inspiratory flow rate into inspiratory time. For example, suppose the inspiratory flow rate is uh, 0.25 liters per second and the inspiratory time is 2 seconds, the tidal volume becomes 0.5 liters or 500 ml. The rate is derived from the cycle time and expressed as the number of complete cycles per minute. For example, if the inspiratory time is 2 seconds and the expiratory time is 4 seconds, then the total breath time is 6 seconds. So the rate equals 1 minute or 60 seconds divided by 6 seconds, that is 10 cycles per minute. Clear? In the first ventilator, we can set the minute volume and rate. Further, you have the knob to control IE ratio also. In the next ventilator, we are asked to set the tidal volume and rate and minute volume becomes the dependent variable. By controlling the inspiratory flow rate, we can indirectly control the IE ratio. The two common parameters missing here are FiO2 and PEEP. Remember, FiO2 is set at the level of flow control knobs in the anesthesia machine. Addition of PEEP is an advanced feature appearing in newer versions. For the time being, let us stick back to basic details. Let me revise a few terminology for you. First, power source is the force that drives gas into the patient's lungs. It can be either compressed gas or electricity. Many currently available anesthesia ventilators are pneumatically powered but electronically controlled. The driving gas is oxygen, air or a mixture of air and oxygen. A clinical point to remember is that using a gas cylinder to power a pneumatic ventilator will quickly deplete the gas supply. It is usually less expensive to use air. Some ventilators use a device called an injector using venturi mechanism to increase the driving gas flow. Some newer ventilators use electricity exclusively to drive the ventilator which spares gas use for the patient. Bellows. It is an accordion like device attached at either at the top or bottom of the bellows assembly. Latex free bellows are available. There are two types of bellows distinguished by their motion during exhalation. Ascending, standing upright or floating ones and descending or hanging or inverted ones. Now to bellows housing. The bellows is surrounded by a clear plastic cylinder or canister or bellows chamber or pressure dome 
that allows the bellows movement to be observed. A scale on the side of the housing provides a rough approximation of the tidal volume being delivered. There are different classifications described for anesthesia ventilators. Let us follow this classification based on the mechanism of generation of positive pressure. First one, mechanical thumb. Here, pressurized gas from cylinders or pipelines is administered to a patient as a continuous flow into the simplest of breathing systems, the TPs. The anesthetist or operator occludes the open end of the TPs with his thumb. My friend Mr. Anuraj is demonstrating it. The force of the fresh gas flow inflates the patient's lungs until the thumb is removed from the open end which allows exhalation to happen. By rhythmical application of the thumb to occlude the TPs, intermittent positive pressure ventilation IPPV is achieved. The fresh gas flow has to be high enough to inflate the lungs during inspiration and as it is not stored during exhalation, this method is wasteful of gas. Therefore, it is suitable only for use in neonatal anesthesia. In ventilators of this type, the operator's thumb is replaced by a pneumatically operated valve, the cycling of which is determined by the settings of the ventilator controls. Second one is minute volume dividers. A more economical method of using a continuous source of pressurized gas is to feed it into a ventilator system to be collected by a reservoir R which is continually pressurized by a spring, a weight or its own elastic recoil. You can find two valves V1 and V2. They are linked together and operated by a bistable mechanism. That means when one is open, the other one will be closed. When V1 opens, V2 closes and causes the reservoir to discharge gas to the patient. This is the inspiratory phase. When V1 closes, V2 opens and exhalation is permitted, allowing the reservoir bag to refill in preparation for the next breath. It may be noted that all of the driving gas that is supplied is delivered to the patient. These ventilators are referred to as minute volume dividers as they merely divide up the intended minute volume supplied by the driving gas. The most common type used was the series of ventilators designed by Dr. Roger Manley. Now type 3 will be back squeezers. This one relieves the anesthetist of having to squeeze the reservoir back and apart from freeing him or her to do other things offers the advantages producing more regular ventilation with controllable tidal volume and pressure. Here bag and bottle bellows design ascending bellows variety is shown. Please note that the bellows displayed in the images are deflated. Now into graphical representation of the functioning of ascending bellow ventilators. The bellows is contained within the clear housing. The driving gas from the ventilator does not ventilate the patient directly. The bellows is filled by fresh gas flow or patient gas when in use and attached to a breathing system. The driving gas pushes the gas inside the bellows through the circuit. In the diagram, please identify the drive gas inlet, exhaust valve, and safety relief valve. You may also note the spill valve for gas within the bellows which opens on excessive pressure within the bellows. First the drive gas flows into the housing then it starts to push the bellows from within. Once the bellows are pushed down the fresh gas or patient gas within the bellows gets pushed into the breathing circuit. As more drive gas gets in, 
bellows gets pushed more and more flow occurs into the breathing circuit. Now we cycle into exhalation phase. The inlet valve for the drive gas closes and exhaust valve opens. Gas mixture from the breathing circuit is drawn into the bellows during exhalation as the pressure inside the housing falls. The drive gas escapes through the exhaust valve. Continuous filling of bellows may increase the pressure inside the bellows causing spill valve to open and the gas moves out through the spill valve into the scavenging system. The sequence of events repeat during each breath cycle. We can regulate the parameters like tidal volume, respiratory rate in back squeezer type of ventilators. Within respiratory rate, IE ratio or inspiratory flow and inspiratory time can be set by the operator. These are the various types of back squeezer ventilators. First one is rising bellows arrangement. B is descending bellows arrangement. C is pneumatic piston with mechanical linkage. D is pneumatic piston. Next is cam driven linkage from an electric motor. And the last one screw threaded piston or worm drive powered by electric motor. The one we discuss now is ascending bellows type. In the event of a circuit disconnect or significant leak, an ascending bellows would not fill or would improperly fill during exhalation. This provides clinicians a visible monitor of ventilator function. Because of the improved patient safety, this type of bellows is generally preferred, but does not represent a standard according to the latest document by ASTM. Once again, see the drive gas being pushed into the housing. Now the bellows are pushed down creating gas flow into the breathing system. During exhalation, gas from the breathing system goes into the bellows and the ascending bellows rise. You can see the drive gas escaping through the exhaust valve. Second type is back skewer descending bellows arrangement. Hanging bellows which typically is weighted could fill whether the circuit Disconnection is there or a leak or a normal exhalation is present. The room air could enter the circuit and allow the bellows the ability to return to its fill position. During exhalation, the weighted bellows draw gas mixture from the breathing system into the bellows. As in the previous one, the drive gas gets flushed out of the housing. Next type is piston ventilators. They rely on piston cylinder configuration in which an electric motor is used to drive or displace the piston within the cylinder to cause a gas flow. Tidal volume accuracy is believed to improve because the precision position of the piston during inspiration is monitored from start to finish. The motor returns the piston to the filled position prior to the next delivered breath. Now into exhalation phase. The bellows may also be squeezed mechanically by means of a motor and suitable gears and levers. The movement of the cam produces a sinusoidal inspiratory pressure rise. In the expiratory phase, the bellows may be re-expanded by the pull of the piston. In some models, the piston rod is decoupled during exhalation phase. It is called as lost motion drive using springs. This is no longer a common method. Next worm drive model. 
Here, bellows travel is produced by a linear travel of a worm gear driven by an electric motor. The speed of the motor can be altered both in inspiration and in exhalation to produce a variety of flows. This is a method used in Dragger E series of ventilators. Most of the recent advances in ventilator design have been due to sophisticated electronics. The two key features need some preliminary explanation in order to understand how this generation of ventilators function and perform. One of these is the electronic flow valve. This has become a major component in the driving gas pathway and has reduced greatly the number of working parts in the ventilator. The other is the programmable microprocessor that controls the operation of this valve. Now, modern sophisticated ventilators in anesthesia are non-inferior to ICU ventilators with a wide range of modes of ventilation with advanced graphic screens displaying scalars and loops. As we always say, know your machine before using it. Hence, it is worth reading the product literature of your anesthesia workstation and get the maximum out of the machine. I sincerely hope that you enjoyed the graphical interpretation of the mechanism behind anesthesia ventilators from basics to advanced ones. Looking forward to your comments and feedbacks. For Anesthesia Tools, it's me Sanish signing off. Goodbye.